It's the first ever meeting between NC State and LSU, but the two programs are very familiar with each other. In Thursday's matchup, PAC head coach Mark Gottfried will face his former Alabama assistant and third year LSU coach Johnny Jones. And on the court, current PAC senior guard Ralston Turner will be part of one of the nation's best backcourts against his former LSU team. But for the PAC, the keys to winning this one come to stopping an NBA talented Tigers front court and Gerald Martin and Jordan Mickey. For that story, we go to Nguzi Akelado. Nguzi, take it away. Thank you, Mark. Now, NC State is not interested in busting anyone's bracket. They still remember the last time they were in eight seed in 2013, and they suffered that disappointing second round loss. This time around, Mark Godfrey said the team is not paying attention to the number in front of their name, especially when it comes to this LSU matchup. We're used to seeing late game heroics from Trevor Lacey, but this time the Wolfpack second round thriller came down to a big shot from their big man, BJ Anya, to help them survive and advance. Let's just call it the legend of BJ Anya, and for that we go to Pittsburgh and Ngozi Akelado. Yeah, Mark, he did have a legendary shot last night. And after that thrilling win, BJ Anya said, look, I practice my hook shots every single day in practice. And it finally paid off the sophomore with the statement that helped save the Wolfpack's postseason at Dreams. NC State needed a huge second half comeback to take down LSU, but they understand that the East region's top seed Villanova is an entirely different animal and it will take a complete effort from start to finish to pull off the upset. Villanova has not beaten NC State since 1959, and the last time the two teams met in 2007, the Wolfpack came away with the one-point thrilling win. For that story, let's go to Pittsburgh, where Nguzi Akelido has it all covered. Nguzi? Thank you, Mark. Now, tonight's game versus Villanova is the sixth time that NC State faces a number one seed in their tournament history. And against these top seeds, the Wolfpack have a two and three record. Now, the last time that the Wolfpack actually pulled off this upset over a top seed, none of the players on this current roster were even born yet. It came in 1983, and I know all the NC State fans know that was the same year that they won the national championship. Let's go now live to Pittsburgh. Where Nguzi Akelado took it all in. And Nguzi, you're off to a pretty good start covering NCAA basketball for us. This, I have to say, my first NCAA tournament, this is about as good as it could get tonight. It was the same story for the Wolfpack. We've seen them do this before against Duke when they upset them when they were a number one seed, but it means a completely different story when you upset the number one seed in the NCAA tournament in Villanova, and it took a complete 40 minute effort from the Wolfpack and the big men were the big story. 34 points in the paint for the Wolfpack, just overpowering the Wildcats. And NC State used a beautiful high low attack to expose Villanova's lack of size. Now, you also have to credit the Wolfpack's defense as well. They held a Villanova team that can get hot from beyond the arc if you let them to just 32% from three point range and 19 made field goals in the win. The team is enjoying it now. Now all smiles as they book their tickets to Syracuse in the Sweet 16. Let's go to Ngozi Akelado, who's with the Blue Devils in Houston. Ngozi, how are you? Thank you, Joe. I'm doing well. And as the Blue Devils prepare for their 24th all-time appearance in the Sweet 16, no one on this team more excited than freshman Justice Winslow because for this first-year Duke player, he gets to play on one of the biggest stages of his career in his hometown. Now, on top of all of that, it's also Winslow's birthday. So he said that he's hoping to, you know, go to a couple of restaurants here, some of his favorite restaurants. His uncle owns one here. And he said that he's, his greatest gift is getting to play basketball at this time of year. Duke and Utah have met just once in the NCAA tournament, and it came nearly five decades ago in 1966. Against top seeds, the Utes hold a 2-6 and six record overall, and Duke hopes to find comfort in that stat when it comes to competing for a spot at the Elite Eight. Now, as Duke and Utah prepare for their late tip tonight, you can't help but feel like this has all happened before because the Blue Devils, they made the same stop in Houston in 2010, only then the venue was known as Reliant Stadium rather than NRG 
Stadium. And then they headed to the Final Four in Indianapolis, the site of this year's Final Four as well, where the team eventually cut down the nets for the 2010 national title. And it won't be easy, though, to advance because Duke and Utah match up nearly identically in all of the key stats in categories. Duke does have this stat over the Utes, though, a 2-0 record all-time in NRG Stadium. Justice Winslow had a homecoming party here in Houston to help the Blue Devils advance to the Elite Eight over a pesky Utes team that they held to 35% shooting from the field and forcing 15 turnovers with some tough Duke defense. As Duke and Gonzaga prepare for Sunday's Elite Eight matchup, both of these schools are reflecting on the fact that they've built their program's credibility on durability. In just the past decade alone, Duke ranks second on the NCAA's list of winningest teams, but the school that sits right behind them is their opponent in Gonzaga. Yeah, and both of the players on these teams say they share a collective experience of remembering when they watched Gonzaga great Adam Morrison in that classic NCAA tournament, but they they also have never met each other here in the big dance. In the regular season, though, they've played twice. Duke won both of those games on a neutral court in Madison Square Garden. And the Blue Devils also taking comfort in this fact under Coach K. They're 11 and 2 in Elite Eight appearances. And of course, their only losses in those appearances came to the national champ. So pretty good stats there. Let's start with Ngazi Akelado. She's live in Houston for us. Ngazi? Hey, Heather, yes, you mentioned it, jubilation, pure joy here tonight for Blue Devils fans and the team as they head back to the Final Four. All week long, they've said, you know, this is a business trip. They didn't want to get too high on, you know, the pressure or the expectations of getting to Indianapolis, but now they can finally breathe a little bit easier and exhale as they handled Gonzaga in that 66-52 win to book the last ticket to Indianapolis in the Final Four. Now, the players are actually on a flight back to Durham as we speak. They're slated to arrive back to campus at 1230 tonight. It's a late arrival, but something tells me none of them are going to be sleeping tonight knowing that they're heading to Indy. Watch the Blue Devils cut down the nets. Hey, Nguzi. Hey, Joe. Yes, it's been a fun night. Now, Duke senior Quinn Cook has mentioned this season that he was desperately wanting to reach a Final Four. And a funny moment happened after the game as they were cutting down the nets. It was his turn. He was going up the ladder to cut down his portion of the net. And he said, hey, you know, I'm scared of heights. Well, something tells me he got over that quickly as he is soaring to new heights in his first Final Four appearance. Kind of sunk in for you, and I mean, no use cut down the nets, but... No, nah, it hasn't. I'm just, I'm just enjoying it. Uh, you know, I'm just happy that I'm a part of this uh, program and with these guys. Now, these Duke players have mentioned all season long their defense has helped them win a lot of these games that they've played. Well, tonight it came up huge. They held a Gonzaga team that shoots a NCAA best 52% from the field to 44%, and they only allowed two three-point shots from the Zags in this win. That's a defense that they're going to need to continue in Indy against a pesky Michigan State team. Are heading to Indianapolis tomorrow for the Final Four. They'll take on Michigan State on Saturday. Coach K just wrapped up a news conference, and Guzzi Akelado is live at Cameron Indoor Stadium. Good afternoon, and Guzzi. Good afternoon, guys. Yes, Coach K just wrapped up here a while ago, and during his press conference, he actually talked about his players' attitudes. He said, you know, none of the players have reached this big stage before. They've watched players in the past make it to Final Fours and even uh, hang up national championship banners here at Cameron. But he said, look, you got here, but keep your attitude the same. He said, just be you and don't change. He also compared it to NFL players when they reach the Super Bowl. He said a lot of times those guys become really flashy and try to make the moment about them. He said, don't do that. Enjoy it, but just be you when you reach Indianapolis. They've talked about how all season long, their brotherhood, their family. Coach K actually said one of his favorite moments from last week and was having his nine grandchildren on hand to watch them cut down the nets to send them to Indianapolis. So I'm sure he will be hoping they're going to be there in Indianapolis. This is good luck charm as well. He's not the only one in need of extra caffeine. Just back from Houston, and Guzzi Akelado is live at Cameron to tell us what Coach K had to say today. Hey, Guzzi. Hey, Joe. Yeah, thank you for that intro. I will get a cup of coffee after this. But for these Duke players, they're focusing on their game against Michigan State. And it's a game that they've played before. They actually faced the Spartans in November at the beginning of this season in Indianapolis with the Blue Devils winning that one behind Tyus Jones. But every single Duke player that came to the podium today mentioned how this time around it'll be so much more different. The Blue Devils said practice for one at this time of the year is for these big tournaments games is about five 
fine tuning for your opponents. Jaleel Okafor said it's about being sharp, not just working on plays, but counters to those plays. And Tyus Jones also said that the team will need to be ready for the Spartans transition game. It can really hurt you if you don't get back on the fast break. So yes, while both teams have cut down their regional nets, Coach K said it will be highly unwise to look at their earlier tape from that November matchup and to get too comfortable. Yeah, and he also said that, you know, they're not looking ahead to Monday night. First, they're focusing on this game against Michigan State. And Coach K also mentioned that the player that they're going to be looking at in that one is Travis Trice. He said he's playing the best out of any of these guys in the tournament right now. There are two very different teams. Duke will tell you they are a lot better. And Guzzi Akelado joining me now in Michigan State is saying the same thing. They are a much different team than that first meeting. That's exactly what they were saying. And today they were kind of mentioning their defense from that first performance. They said they tightened it up. They're turning the ball over less. In fact, they're holding their teams to 34% shooting from the field, 23% shooting from a three-point ranger. Uh, you can get hot if you let them. So completely a different team. And they said this is a goal to get to Indy that they've circled on their calendar all year long. Ironically, these Spartans are mirroring this year's turner in aspirations off the very team that beat them last season, UConn. They remember that the Huskies won the national title as the lowest remaining seed. The coach kind of mentioned, you know, how excited his team is to be here. He also focused in on his senior Quinn Cook. And you know when you were a kid and your parents would tell you, you know, you'll appreciate this moment when you're a bit older. Well, Quinn Cook, the senior on this team, is kind of playing that role for this young Blue Devils team. He said, you know, earlier today, I feel like a kid in a candy store with everything that's going on and being here. And he keeps on encouraging his younger teammates, including Duke's three starting freshmen, to fully soak in this moment. Yeah, and Coach K also said when mentioning Cook that the reason these last four teams are here is not just because they have star freshmen on their squads, but because each one of these four teams has an experienced veteran or upperclassman or senior that has helped lead their team here to this big stage, and they know how to handle it. I know it's Quinn Cook's first time here, but he was plenty excited, kept mentioning how blessed he felt to be in Indianapolis. After Saturday night's Final Four win over Michigan State, the loudest celebration didn't come from the Cameron Crazies or Duke players. That honor, in fact, belonged to the hilarious duo of Chucky and Emeka Okafor. The Duke faithful already pumped up about it, and Guzzi Ikelado is live in Indianapolis right now as the excitement builds. And Guzzi? Yes, the excitement is building. I was actually walking around the hotel today. I saw a lot of fans buying shirts that look like these. Of course, two of these teams are uh, gone. Duke and Wisconsin, the final two left in a battle tonight. We actually saw the Wisconsin team bus pass by us about five minutes ago, heading to the stadium, probably for their last minute uh, shoot around and walk through to prepare for tonight's game. It's going to be a big one featuring two big men between AP Player of the Year and Badger seven footer. Frank Kaminsky versus uh, Duke freshman and big man Jaleel Okafor. We talked to his dad and uncle last night. They both said that they are going to be uh, the loudest fans in the entire stadium like they've been all season long supporting him and the Blue Devils. We've seen plenty of Badgers fans passing by, Blue Devils fans passing by in their Coach K t-shirts. So everyone getting ready. Joining me now in Guzzi Akelado, you've been speaking with the Badgers the last couple days. What are they saying? Yeah, the Badgers, as we all know, it's kind of a two-headed attack for them in terms of what Duke's trying to stop. Sam Decker and AP Player of the Year, Frank Kaminsky, both those guys combined, averaging about 42 points combined for the Badgers in tournament action. So you have to stop them. But everyone has also been talking about that matchup inside Kaminsky and Jaleel Okafor, including Bo Ryan, saying that this is going to be a battle of heavyweights. Now, I thought it was actually interesting, too. Kaminsky said yesterday that he actually grew up a Duke fan. He said that, you know, he, he watched J.J. Redick, he said that was one of his favorite players, so he said it was really cool that he's playing against a team that he's admired so much. I think everyone's been talking about, you know, the storied programs in this Final Four, in this national championship game, and I think they're all excited that it's a game between two programs that have, you know, Wisconsin's been on the rise. Duke, of course, has uh, always been here, mm -hmm. but Bo Ryan looking for that first Division One national championship. Of course, Mike Krzyzewski looking, uh, Duke looking for their fifth, so yep. lots of storylines. Now on the set, Ngozi Akelado, you've been speaking with the Badgers. This is far and away 
the toughest test that Duke has faced in this tournament. It's the toughest test, too, for Wisconsin. They, they said that, you know, coming off of that emotional win over Kentucky, that they have their confidence at an all-time high, but that know it's a completely different animal when it comes to the Blue Devils. Both of these teams know what's at stake tonight. It's going to be a battle between two heavyweights, and the winner will leave Indianapolis with the ultimate hardware. Our Duke has just wrapped up its fifth national title, beating the Wisconsin Badgers 68 to 63. Mark Armstrong and Guzzi Akelito with the breakdown here. And let me just start out by saying something very clinical. Grayson freaking Allen and Tyus freaking Jones. These are the guys that made the plays down the stretch. Definitely, and they were saying before Grayson Allen averaging four points a game tonight, he just broke out. He was their X Factor. I know everybody was saying Justice Winslow was going to be the X Factor. It was Grayson Allen. I mean, 16 points. And another uh, key stat in tonight's game, 60 of these 68 points were Duke scored by their four freshmen.